Welcome to Conversations with a Character. I am here with Ariel Vargas, who is an independent artist and he understands that content is king right now. It's a huge part of what you gotta do if you wanna make it as an independent artist today. I can't wait to hear his story. Let's start at the beginning, Ariel. How old are you? Where are you from? Uh, I'm 18 years old. Um, I'm, in, I'm living in Connecticut right now. Both my parents are Peruvian. Okay, okay. So tell me about growing up, man. What was, what was childhood like? Not that you're yeah. not still a child, kind of, but you know, I'm yeah. 35, you're kidding, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so um, for me, I was it was really, it was very interesting. I would say because I was surrounded by people who liked music a lot. Like, for example, my brother he went to LA Film School for music, and I'd always hear his guitar in in this in this very room actually. That's now my <laughs> little studio. Um, I'd always hear him playing guitar, and I think that's kind of what called me to want to do music because okay. it like it was always surrounding me like. Wine though is a very popular Peruvian genre. That's that also just being surrounded by a bunch of that was really, I think, kind of paved the road. For sure, man. When did you start making music? I started making music in, I think I was like about 10 years old when I picked up my first guitar when I was in like fifth grade. How do your parents feel about you guys kind of going that artistic route? Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're really supportive. I'm really, really thankful that they are, truly. Man, so, you know, the song that you're really pushing right now, the Not Sorry song, that's in my head, by the way. It's been in my head all day long, knowing I was going to yeah. interview, like, not sorry for feeling myself now. <laughs> uh, but, you know, tell me about the journey of that song, because, I mean, you've been posting a lot about it. It's a really great song. It stands a good chance of blowing up, man. So tell me about that song. Yeah, I appreciate you on that. So for me... I, I I had the title not sorry and I had the I had the instrumental made for the most part and I really wanted to keep that title because I was like dude this title sounds sick <laughs> and, I, and I did I just didn't know what to write about and so then I was like okay I don't know what to write about that's going on in my life how about I write about something from someone else's perspective and every time I thought of not sorry, the first thing that popped into my head is some like something about someone being unapologetic, someone about something, something you're not sorry for. And I've always heard songs that are push the message about being yourself, like be yourself, be your authentic self. And I was like, okay, these these like topics kind of you know align with each other. And I wanted to write. That's when I realized I wanted to write the song about being yourself but in a way that wasn't cheesy because I didn't want it to come off. <laughs> Be yourself. <laughs> yeah, like that. And that's how I came up with that chorus and that whole idea. It's about being yourself on, a, on being your uh, authentic self unapologetically. And I wrote it from a perspective of a relationship as if someone was just in a relationship realizing, oh, I need to stop changing who I am for somebody. That's kind of what the song is written from. That's interesting, though, because, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of independent artists really don't even make songs about their real life. You know, a lot of it's just kind of mimicking what other artists do. So that was a really cool approach to take. Uh, how many other songs do you have on streaming platforms right now? Right now I have Not Sorry and I have one other one that's called Hope. Tell me about that one. Yeah, so that song, it's it was my first release back in November 4th of 2022. And I really wanted my first song to kind of be, this is me. And so I wrote it um, about the journey that I've had uh, about coming to my faith. And that was that just kind of really, like I said, I wanted the song to be, this is me, this is how, this is who I am. And that's kind of what the song speaks about. It's about how I was, I was very lost. And then I came to faith, came to Christianity and I was like, uh, I have hope. That's the title of the song, okay. and that's where I found hope. And that's what, like I said, I wanted that to be kind of my first song. But starting with "Not Sorry" and all my future releases, I kind of want them to be very anyone can listen to them kind of song, okay. very universal. What made you end up going into Christianity? Yeah. So for me, it, I was in um, like I'll get a little personal. I was in like a very dark space during COVID. And it was like, and I think every, I think a lot of people were in a very dark space. I was getting very anxious, very, very like sad and all also, that. I mean, for a guy your age, man, it totally fucked up high school. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> 
Like, Literally, I was. <laughs> you got no, uh, you know, um, you know, you didn't get to do any of the traditional things, man. Your whole your right. whole high school career is different. Right, and it, it like it, it, and it really didn't stop affecting my high school career until mm-hmm. like my senior year. Even then, it was still like a little. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely, yeah. man. So, what took you so long to start recording? Like, you start, you picked up the the guitar at ten years old, and then you know you just put your first song out last year. So, <laughs> what was that journey like? Like, how'd you end up doing the vocals and everything? So, for me, my journey was, I I've always wanted to sing, but I've never, I've always been like too scared. I've always been like too shy to really start doing it. And I really started getting into the groove of things when I was about to go into high school. Like, my, when I was in eighth grade, that's when I was kind of like, okay. I want to break out of this shell and I want to do this. So I'm just going to do it. Um, and so that's when I started singing. Um, I started recording little covers in this room with my old microphone. I wonder if I have it around here somewhere. I started recording covers on that and they were terribly recorded. <laughs> I listen back to them. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I thought I was onto something. <laughs> But that's that's really how that's really how it started. It started out here me singing a bunch of Louis Capaldi songs, singing a bunch of Justin Bieber songs, because I was I was a heavy believer when I was in like <laughs> I was all about that, all about. That. <laughs> that's cool, man, and that's a good way to learn, though. So what made you branch off from covers and, and start doing your own thing? Yeah, so I I really got inspired by Charlie Puth. He's my that's who I draw the most inspiration from. Uh, and I really I really liked his his music. And so I remember one day I was just like, okay, I wanna make, I wanna make, I wanna try making a song. And I, I couldn't make beats for crap during this time. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I, I literally looked up Charlie Puth type beat yep. on YouTube. And that's how I started writing, I started writing lyrics to it. And I remember I, I did that up until I got to a one point where I was like, able to make instrumentals that I genuinely liked and when I got to that point that's when I kind of started putting two and two and two together okay I can have confidence in my ability to write lyrics and melodies now now let me kind of put that together with the instrumental ability you're working with Sanko I'm sorry Sanko Corleone are you working with him uh no no okay I thought it was one who connected me with you um so you learn what, what what program are you using to make the beats i'm using logic okay okay man that's a, that's that's a big thing and the beat is cool for that not sorry song bro that beat is real catchy that. bro i appreciate that what do you consider your biggest accomplishments Oof, my biggest accomplishments i think definitely getting hope is currently at a little over 3k streams on spotify so i'm definitely definitely proud of that i'm also just very proud of being in college right now because it's like such a good opportunity what are you in there for what are you going to school for i'm going to school for music production and technology where university of hartford hell yeah bro hell yeah it's yeah. a four-year degree you're going for yeah yeah what do you hope to do with that i really i want to be able to make music for myself but i also want to be able to make music for others because i've i know what it's like to kind of feel encapsulated or be feel limited by the technology that's in front of you because it's just I, I get it it can be scary it can be kind of like very daunting when you're when you're an artist and i know a lot of artists i think nowadays more artists are starting to learn how to produce how did that whole that whole technology thing works but even just to help the just the singer just the instrumentalist being able to record stuff professionally that is definitely something i want to do how'd you learn i honestly i learned on GarageBand. i was just experimenting i was like okay i want to try this i tried recreating recreating instrumentals that was a big thing i tried recreating them get them as close as i possibly can fiddle around with all the plugins there what is what does this do what's a chorus thing what's this flanger thing <laughs> play playing around with literally everything what kind of reception does your music get from your friends they they love it honestly and i tell them i'm telling i tell them dude like be be real with me if i wasn't your friend what would you would you still say the same thing a lot of them say yeah 
a lot, a lot, everyone says yeah but like <laughs> I, i've asked i've asked i've asked a few people who aren't necessarily in like i'm not friends with per se they they dig it too so i definitely gonna keep improving but i think i'm in a good spot that's a cool thing though because back in my day no one recorded their own music i mean there we didn't have the technology we didn't have the program you know it was it wasn't nearly as readily available but the people who did really everybody gave them shit for making music you know it was it was a much meaner thing much meaner reception the music got back in the day yeah this content that you make i mean you know you grew up in in the world of social media for sure did you ever make content before you made music yes I used to make. Oh, this is gonna bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I used to make. I used to be so fond of gaming videos. Gaming videos, Lego reviews. I used to have <laughs> <a> YouTube channel. <laughs> I used to have this YouTube channel called Aerial Master of Lego, kind of playing off of the whole Ninjago Masters of Spinjitsu show. Okay. And I don't know if you can see it. This whole shelf is filled with Ninjago stuff. I have a whole shelf right here. I see the Spider-Man thing up there. I got it. And I have a mask <laughs> right there. It's, it's like a lot. <laughs> That's cool, bro. That, I mean, did you keep the same account when you started making music and making the content? No, I wish I did, though, because I, there are times where I'm like, I wish I could look back on those videos and just kind of see them just for giggles and stuff, because I used to make reaction videos as well to like Jacob Sartorius videos like I, I used to make a whole bunch of junk on there that I wish I could just look back on. How have you seen the progress with the content that you made, uh, you know, you're following and everything like that? How has that been going? It's been going pretty good. Um, even during COVID, I think is when I really started posting a lot, especially on TikTok. I started taking advantage of that. Um, I started posting a bunch of videos with the little darky sound, like the ha 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 ha, with that, because that that was popping during that yeah. time. And so I was like, okay, I was like, okay, let me just take the ha 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 and just put a different sound effect on it. And the first one I made was like, this is really old video not very old but it's a semi-old video about some a bunch a completion of laughs and one of the guys laughs is like hyung, 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 hyung. <laughs> and i took that i took that guy's laugh and i just put it on every one of those ha 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 beats and then i was like this is really easy to make and people started loving it and people started giving requests so it was like a really good way for me to like communicate with people and giving them giving them what they want that was kind of the real start that really got me a genuinely speaking got me thousands of followers on tiktok and now i'm at like 245,000 on tiktok and damn. that's how it started damn tiktok's tough to build a following on too man it is and even thank you and even if i can go a little further on that it's um i i got those followers really quick but the thing is though i think i got those followers for that one thing and then as soon as I started transitioning to something else, like music or per se, it was very, it still is, it's still, I'm still figuring it out how I can transition all these followers that followed me for this into something else. Right, into fans. Right. No, for sure. And, and I mean, honestly, that's that's the way that I recommend a lot of artists do it is the way you've done it is is kind of, you know, uh, build a following for other types of content because people will follow you more likely for good content than music. And then if they get right. the following, then they'll be like, oh, man, he does music, too. I want to hear that. Do you get yeah. less views when you post the music stuff now? I think now it's been getting pretty consistent. Not they don't get as much views as like the old videos would. Sure. But now they're they're at a point where it's like a cons consistent, consistent like view count okay. when I post stuff. Okay. Well, hell yeah, that's what's up, man. What's the biggest obstacles that you have to face? Oof, for content, content, just, music, life, you know. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's just getting over that, getting over that perfectionism. Mm. Because for me, like not not even just with music. Every time I'm like with photography, whenever I'm do whenever I'm doing a photo shoot, I'm like, ah, oh, this this doesn't look good. Don't oh, no, take that one again. No, 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 no. I'm just such a perfectionist. Like I said, with music too. Like, not sorry took me like three months to mix 
on top of the fact that <laughs> to, mix it's them. Fun to mix yeah it's like and recording oh my gosh don't even get started on recording for, because i'm such i'm so i'm way too picky i'm like i i get in front of a microphone i'd sing and i'm like i do it again again and again i do the same take again and again and again and again and reality is i think i'm really the only one that's going to hear the crazy big difference the very minimal differences in there absolutely but, bro <laughs> and it's like and i'm like but i want my excuse for me is like but i i want to be able to listen to it and be very proud of it and you'll cringe every time you hear that th one thing you wish you would change man you have no idea <laughs> it's, it's insane and like um on top of that like a little story about not sorry as well it was all I, I already sent it to distro kid for it to be distributed and i'm listening back to the master i'm uh, I, I listen back to the master and i'm like oh this is sick and then the final chorus one of the ad libs there's like this very loud like click sound on the left oh. which was super weird and I'm like, and I'm battling within myself. I'm like, okay, but only I heard it. And I didn't hear it the first time. My friends don't hear it. So I tried to push it off. I genuinely did. But I was like, no, this is going to bother me way too much. This is going to bother me way too much. And so what I, I still had it set weeks in advance. So I had time to pull it off and put it and put the new master version in. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm running super short on time. No. Um, but it's just little things like that, which I think it's good to be a perfectionist to some extent. But I think there's also it's slim. Like you have to know when it's like it's good enough. No doubt, bro. Did you say that you're a photographer too? <laughs> oh no, it's something I want to get into. Whenever like I'm I'm being okay. Like, you're a photo shoot. When you're yeah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, I feel you, man. What's the dream? <sighs> I really I want to be able to make a living off of being a singer, songwriter, and producer. Um, kind of like with what I was saying earlier, I want to be able to make music for myself um, and make music for others because I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. If I have this, if the spotlight's on me for like for a few years, I'm fine with that. Um, but I still want to be able to make music for other people, write a song and then hand it off to another artist, have that blow up and just like see other people succeed as well. Oh yeah. I mean, I know you take forever to make these songs or whatever, but you got anything coming up that you know about? Yeah, this next one, um, I, this next one really, it, it's a, it's in a very special spot in my heart for me. And it's, it's very different. It's sonically very different than Not Sorry and Hope. It's both of my releases so far have been very 80s. Heavy yeah, on not sorry is very 80s that that little synth yeah. that you got going on, like it sounds the like from synth, scarface bro <laughs> little the synth and like the very 90s techno bass with the kick the, 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 the <laughs> that. but yeah it's like it's moving because it's like, everywhere but um yeah this next one's very different it's like if i had to give it a word I think it's um it's kind of like a, a blend between R and B trap and pop. Okay, and that's it's that's very, a hell of a blend. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like it's and I I really I really do love this one because it's very it's very personal to me, and it's one of the first songs. Not to say that I can't relate with the past songs, but it's just this one is written from like a very raw standpoint like it's very raw emotionally and it's something that i definitely wanted to write a song about and i'm just excited because it sounds different it's it's unique in in compared to the other ones what is it about so it's really it's about so i was in a relationship in the summer and it was really really good really good it was amazing um but it ended it ended on good terms nothing nothing bad but you know at the end of the day a breakup is a breakup so that's kind of what i wrote the song about it's really from like a raw standpoint it's about trying to get over somebody but you reality is you just can't stop hmm. you just can't and that's why i mean now i process i process what happened i'm better now 
but like i wrote it i wrote it in the moment because it's a really raw song and that's that's what i was feeling in the moment did that song help you process it 100 percent, 100 percent. music is magic bro truly oh i'm telling you oh yeah um do you start promoting the songs before they're released or is like did all this content for not sorry come after it was released no i was planning the content for not sorry i was planning well in advance even before release i posted videos before release um kind of pushing yeah pushing the pre-save link but also just trying to get it stuck in people's heads yeah because i mean i've experienced it like and truth is like i really i really wanted to get this stuck in people's head and i without sounding cocky i was just pretty confident it was gonna get stuck in people's because it's a very like dun, 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 mm-hmm. dun, dun. it's it's very singable it's very yeah. easy I told like, you. i've been singing it all day I've been- <laughs> yeah like there you go exactly <laughs> and i've had a few people come up to me and tell me that it was stuck in their head like some of them just even humming it and it's like that's exactly what i'm going for right there hell yeah when are you gonna start putting content for the new song Oof, I gotta finish that one first. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, it is, it is close to being done though. It's, it's, it's very. With this one, I want it to be like, I, I want it to be like. Oh, here's a better way of saying it. I want it to not be so much of a perfectionist with this one. I want it to like get kind of past the side of me with, um, with me being really way too picky. And so some of the takes, genuinely, I'm like. I could do i'm like part of me is like i could do it better i could do it better but like for th- just even just for this song i'm like i i'll just leave it there it's not bad the takes are not bad whatsoever and i just want to show myself that it's like good if it's good enough you know what i mean yeah if you could spend the day with any one person living or dead for one day who would it be early booth <laughs> <laughs> You had that ready, bro. Like. Oh, jeez. I, I love, I love that guy. It's, it's. He's inspired me so much. Like he's the, he's the reason I'm like, I'm playing piano now. I'm, I'm like getting into jazz. Um, I'm like, I'm a, I'm able to produce and all that. I mean, like I taught this myself, but like seeing seeing him do it, um, that was really inspirational because I think that was like the first artist that I saw that wasn't just the singer hmm. you know i'll be honest i don't even know who that is i gotta look him up when we're done with this yeah there he's the guy <laughs> oh, oh you know see you again that fast and furious song oh oh this- yeah. i do know who it is okay <laughs> okay well that's what's up bro yeah uh, before we end the interview is there any kind of life advice that you would leave for anybody watching yeah um ah you got me thinking i definitely have something to say though don't be hard on yourself. Hmm. Don't be hard on yourself. And that's something I've, I've had to experience myself. Know, know when to say, because there are definitely times where you gotta like look yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, you kind of got to step it up. You got to do better. But then there's also some times where you gotta like, you know, cut yourself some slack, you know? Don't, don't beat yourself up. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Man, I appreciate your time. I can't wait to see what you accomplished, bro. Like I know, when I was like, I don't know, when I see you, some of you young artists and they, you know, like you're looking at the game the right way. Like, I know that we're, this is not the last I hear from you. I can't wait to see you go up, bro. For real. Thank you so much for your time. Thank it's you. been a great conversational character with Ariel Vargas. Hit him up. Follow him up. Check his song out, bro. It is mad catchy and no one's going to hate that song. I'll see you all next time. Peace up. The most prestigious network in the land. The Signature Series Network.